In this uh, video, we will consider the types of motor activity of small intestine. And for that, we will first look at the structure of the intestinal wall. The wall itself is comprised of five layers. The inside layer is the mucosa, and on top of that is submucosa. Then there is a layer of circular muscle, and then the longitudinal muscle, and the outside surface is called serosa. Now, there are two types of motor activities. One is segmental contraction, and the second, peristaltic contraction. And we will consider these in more detail. The motor activity allows a good contact of the chyme with the inside wall, that is the mucosa, and also to ensure that the chyme moves forward in the small intestine. The motor activity is the result of contraction of the muscle layers. That is where the, the two adjacent layers, the circular muscle and the longitudinal muscle, uh, play an important role. And these uh, contractions are because of the passage of calcium ions into the muscle cells. Uh, the contractions are of the myofibrils in the muscular structure. So let's first look at the segmental contractions. These uh, segmental contractions are the most predominant uh, motor activity in the small intestine. It results in further breakdown of chyme into smaller pieces and also in mixing it, as we can see in this uh, cartoon uh, video. Due to these segmental contractions, the intraluminal content, the chyme, is able to move around and come into contact with the mucosa of the small intestine. As we notice, these contractions are circumferential contractions. In other words, they are the result of a decrease in the circumference of the small intestine. And this occurs in fairly short segments, uh, just uh, one to two centimeters long. These uh, segmental contractions decrease from the proximal to the distal part of the small intestine. In other words, decreasing from the duodenum to ilium. And also, they are rhythmic in pattern. The duodenal pacemaker sends an electrical impulse of 11 cycles per minute, and that decreases to about 8 cycles per minute in the ilium. So as we note here, the digestion process is enhanced by the segmental contractions that result in uh, mixing, uh, churning, uh, the breakdown of the chyme in the duodenal, uh, jejunal, and the ileum part of the small intestine. We should also note that segmental contractions uh, do not result in the transport of the chyme. That is the result of the next uh, contraction we will look at, and that is the peristaltic contractions. So the uh, primary purpose of the peristaltic contraction is to move the chyme or the intestinal content uh, to the more distal parts along the small intestine. These peristaltic contraction, as shown in this uh, short video, are slower than the segmental contractions. Uh, they occur over, uh, again, short segments uh, of about six centimeters, and they move the intraluminal content, that is chyme, at a rate of about one to two centimeters per minute. So due to peristaltic contractions, the movement of the chyme uh, takes place from one segment to next. In cases where there are inflammatory conditions, uh, then there is a rapid push of the intraluminal content 
and that is called the peristaltic rush, where the intraluminal content may move at a rate of uh, 2 to 25 centimeters per second. For example, uh, such uh, situation occurs when there are conditions related to diarrhea. Also, there can be a reverse peristalsis in the ileum, and that is to extend the exposure time of the intraluminal content to segmental contractions to allow for more time for the digestion uh, to occur in the ileum. So in summary, we have seen that there are two key contractions that take place in the small intestine. The segmental contraction that result in the mixing and uh, digestion of the intraluminal content and also the peristaltic contraction that allows the transport of the intraluminal content uh, from the proximal uh, to the distal part of the small intestine.